I am excited to go to this gym now, man. I you're can't wait. Right, you're love it. Elite FTS, right? It's like yeah. the spot. <clears throat> it is the spot. It's um, it's just Dave's private gym, um, so it's not like a community gym, but you'll see. You're gonna be very impressed. I'm, I'm stoked. I love new equipment. Like even the prime equipment from yesterday was a treat for me. This is gonna be fun, man. I think I'm starting to get a little spoiled from all my trips. You might be. Yeah. If I go to a gym that doesn't have a bunch of fancy stuff, I'm getting a little snooty mm -hmm, in my old mm -hmm, age. Mm -hmm. I can like, see that. come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the hip press made by Rogers? <laughs> yeah. What kind of gym is this? Uh -huh. That's how I want to be. So this is just kind of a simple breakfast. We got two eggs, turkey sausage, whole wheat toast, and some potato wedges. John's got the real potato over here. Well, normally, normally my breakfast is just two eggs and two pieces of toast. Mm -hmm. That's what I normally eat. Mm -hmm. But we've got an hour drive to uh, our gym, so, and then we'll probably talk and visit a little bit. So I got a little bit more food, so I don't get hungry. So I got my two eggs and two two pieces of toast, plus some turkey sausage, some fruit, and I couldn't pass up the carrot cake pancake. Mm. That's gonna come in handy toward the end of the workout, mm -hmm. you'll see. Mm. We'll have to call upon the pancake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alright, so we're pulling in the F, uh, lead FTS, but we got to make a quick stop here at the London Baptist Church. So we're headed into church. Are we giving thanks or asking forgiveness? Um, I'm praying that Jeff doesn't kill me with this full body workout. Forgive me, Father, for curling in the squat rack. <laughs> the lead FTS is literally out here in a field. Is this really it, though? Yeah. Oh, geez. It's awesome. Like, oh, we're, look at this. Like, dude, we're like out in a field right now. So do people just like work in here like distribution yeah. type yeah. deal? Okay. okay. They have the, there's warehouses too where they I got gotcha. send out all their stuff and I got gotcha. you. So there won't will there be other people training in here? Like is it a public No, it's not a public training. Oh, there probably isn't anybody training, honestly. Gotcha. This is so cool. So, I'm gonna, I, we we should give them just like a quick little run through. Like not, yeah. not, not, not a full tour, but just try to show them the enormity of it, like how much equipment is in here. There's a lot of different types of machines here. Is this a, like a Pendlay row? That is a prototype uh, leg curl that they're working on, but really? somebody is, is jimmy rigging it right here, I guess, uh -huh. and they're doing some rows. This is an inverted leg, uh, leg curl. Oh, wow. So I you actually that. put this against your chest and you lower yourself with it, and here's oh, the counterbalance. Oh, cool, cool. It's pretty cool, wicked cool. for hamstrings. All right, well, um, I say we just get started. We can kind of show people around as we go. Yep, How about that? Sounds good. I'm running the show today, hey? Yes, you are. Okay. <laughs> if something's going to hurt me, I'll tell you. <laughs> There's about like a hundred different types of barbells here. I don't know if you can get perspective for it on camera, but there's like fat bars, skinny bars, cambered bars. That's all, crazy. All the different Swiss bars, different angles for grip. So we're gonna do full body today. Um, start with legs. So okay. do, we have a leg focus. So we'll do okay. one multi-joint squat type movement and okay. then one hamstring gotcha. type movement. Gotcha. And then we'll move on to, we'll do one exercise for chest, one for shoulders, one for back, even though we hit back yesterday, so we'll keep it kind of an easier exercise. Okay. And then maybe abs, calves. Gotcha. Cool. All right. So one of each. So I'm just gonna do like body weight walking lunges, the whole length of this little track here, twice, down and back. So I'm just gonna do yeah, about like five minutes of dynamic stretching and foam rolling, just get the joints nice and loosened up because it is a little bit colder in here. Uh, a couple sets of six okay. on this. So decently heavy. What would you call this? This is a spider bar. Spider it's a bar. combination of a safety squat bar and a camber. This camber makes it really challenging. If your form isn't impeccable, this can swing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this bar itself weighs 75, 80 pounds. Right. Crazy heavy. Yeah, it is. I, I curled it up to get it up in the squat rack. And I was like, oh, this is definitely a max not effort. a normal bar. Yeah, it was a max effort it was a curl. RM curl. This apparatus here, makes the weight shifted slightly more forward. So it forces you to keep more of an upright back posture. So I, I find it a little bit more comfortable in my lower back. Yeah, well, for sure. Um, and it's gonna be probably slightly more quad dominant. Too. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I'm focusing more on volume accumulation here okay. and getting to something around like, I'm gonna say like an RPE seven or so. Okay. Um, okay. RPE seven to eight. Gotcha. So that should still feel pretty heavy, Still right? Um, so, and, and those will be our working sets. So we'll do 
we'll work up to two in that in that zone. Okay. Two or three, depending on how they go. Uh, Get real tight. Nice. <sighs> nice. <sighs> How did that look to you? Awesome. Good. Yes. Sir. Awesome. You get deaf with that spine straight up, you're yes. crushing your quads. So I would call that like RP6. Okay. So I'm going to do two more with a little bit more. Nice. How long do you usually rest between your sets of these? Mm, three to five minutes. Probably be closer to three today. I like to do about move. 25 minutes. <laughs> there we yeah. go. Yes, sir. Up, two steps back. One, two. Okay. Right there. Tight. There we go. Come on. Drive. Two. Good. Come on, drive. Gotcha. Come on. Here we go. Up. Two more. Good. Two more. Let's go. Up. Good. Last one. Up. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. For this one, as long as you're comfortable with it, yeah. I want you to go to an RPE 8. RPE 8, so leave. So leave two in the tank. Two? So you might need to go, I don't know, you're around the six to eight rep range, but what the most important thing is your proximity to failure. So not forget the, the six reps, reps but. It, yeah, but leave two you. in the tank. I got you. Yeah, yeah. So you tell me you actually want me to do real work? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I was just gonna leave 10 in the tank, man. <laughs> Dang, he foiled my plan. <laughs> oh yeah, <clears throat> easy way. Let's go. Come on. <clears throat> you got way more. Let's go. Come on. <clears throat> yep. Keep it going. Keep it going. <clears throat> Come on. Keep it going. Keep it going. Oh, that's pretty good. Mode. Yeah, that's, that's good. That's good. <laughs> Wait, that's probably good. That's probably good. That's good. As Beavis and Butthead would say, fire. <laughs> that's good that you did it though. Getting getting that threshold of intensity in is more important than just stopping a six. That's right. Here we go. Back to work. Okay. Back to work. Yes. Yep. Oh yeah, that's tight. Here we go, come on. Come on, here we go. Up. Good. Come on. Up. Good. Come on, up. Good. Come on. Come on. Good. Two more. Up. I got two more. Okay, let's go. Up. Good. Come on. Up. Yeah. Walk it in. That's a nine. That was a nine, right? That's about an eight or nine, yeah. Eight and a half, nine, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Where I pause in between reps to breathe every time, yeah. I get a little more, like I have to push it. It might look harder because you get a little bit of recovery in those one or two seconds. Right. So, you know, if I was to just go, if I was to just go constant tension, yeah. that grindy rep, I might not be able to get another one. Yeah. But if you take one, two, now you can get another it's one. It's more reps, it's yeah. more load. Yeah, so that's yeah. the way I think of it. It's more load, you're doing more reps with the load. So that's it for these now. Okay. So. I survived, no injuries. <laughs> Sometimes I'll move straight into the next leg movement, so we're gonna hit hamstrings, but since these were pretty fatiguing, I think we're gonna move on to a chest movement now, allow our legs to recover a little bit, chest. and then we'll get more out of the hamstring work when we actually get to that. Something I'll do to kind of manage my fatigue in the workout is I'll space out 
any leg work that I have with, say, a chest exercise or a back exercise or something like that, a lot of people have in their heads that they've got to hit all their leg work first or they got to hit all their back work first. But it doesn't really matter as long as you get that volume in throughout the workout. And if you can space it out better in a way that allows you to be more recovered and push more weight, that's gonna, just going to improve your performance and the effectiveness of the workout overall. So it might seem unconventional to move from a squat to a chest press and then go back to the leg curls. But if you think about it, your hamstrings will probably be more recovered if you can space it out that way. There are these little wedges that change the angle of the grip. You see this? Oh, there are that. these little wedges in here. I'm actually always bitching about the grips or the handles on these machines because they break the wrist breakers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's much different. Doesn't that feel better? It's much different. It's just, I don't know if you can adjust them. Can you move it out of it? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, they just like pop off. They're just like back grips. Okay. Like, throw them on that's yeah. sick. Oh, God. This is fun. You good? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna hurt. Okay. This is a tension that I think you're really gonna like. I'm excited. Like I said, I don't do a ton of band stuff, right. but this is fantastic. The contraction you get on this is awesome. Just press and squeeze and see if the flex is really hard. Oh, buddy. Is that flex nasty? Yeah. Right there. Right oh. there. You should get a crazy contraction. Okay, that's good for a warm up. I'm gonna want some weight on there. Boom. Better. Big flex. Oh. That's it. There we go. Squeeze. Squeeze. Okay, that's good. Good. Oh, you can leave it there. So that was 13 RP8. Tell me, man, I don't mess around. You're Full strong. Body. You're I'm strong, dude. <laughs> You're strong. Like, dude, this is hard with these bands. Yeah. <laughs> I was burning down to my calves. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna add a bit of weight, I think. Like a 10? Yeah, let's add a 10. One of the things a lot of people do when, or think when they think full body is a very minimal program. So they think squats, barbell bench press, a row, yeah. maybe some crunches, whatever, and then that's it, right? That's fine if you're training, say, two or three times a week full body. But when you do high frequency full body, imagine doing all those heavy compounds then every day. Yeah, it doesn't work. Joints. Yeah, you're gonna smoke yourself, right? Yeah. So I like to prioritize one heavy compound. We just did that on the squats. Yeah. And then the rest of it, we can do isolation tight movements. Yeah. So this is gonna be easier, in my opinion, on our joints than if we did a loaded up barbell bench press. Gotcha. And we did a loaded up freestanding barbell row. Gotcha. I mean, just imagine you put all that on one day, then the next day you gotta hit those muscles again. Yeah. So for our chest, we're gonna do something that we're squeezing and feeling and protect our joints. Yeah. And then on one of the other full body days, we can do the, the bench press, you know? Yeah. Okay. Big flex. Big flex. There you go. Big flex. Boom. Good. Keep working. Two more. Two more. Come on. Keep working. Good. One more. One more. Let's go. Up, 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 up. There we go. That's good. I call an exercise like this an isolation type exercise because obviously it is a compound exercise you're going to hit your triceps and your delts as well but i think of it more like an isolation exercise because you can really focus on just squeezing the pecs whereas on a bench press you can't get that same type of my muscle connection with one muscle we're going to do this actually i'm not sure what do we call this inverse curl so this is going to provide some assistance on your way down so it's going to be like a glute ham raise with a bit of assistance here this is very cool <laughs> whoa now you can contract. It's too much assistance. It's like, it's almost, I almost got to fight to bring it down. Big Rami must have been using this before so, me. So hang on. Now see if that's about right. See if that's about right. This will be good for a warm up set, but I'm going to take another plate off when I work. Okay. This is the most amazing glute ham race I've ever done. Yeah, this is a working set for me. Yep. How, how hard do we go? Let's do 10. Maybe. Same thing, I might not a couple, couple reps in reserve. So don't go all the way down, or we can, I can add a bit more here. So I like this, this movement, as opposed to just our normal leg curl, because your hamstrings have to work to keep the hips extended. Yeah. 
and flex yeah. the knee at the same time. <laughs> so you're performing two joint actions in the one movement, which on a full body setup is nice. It's like you could do an RDL and a leg curl. That's right. Or you could kind of knock them both out with this yeah, one Yeah, that's a good point. They're different, obviously different loading patterns and stuff, but I mean, it's, it's a very efficient exercise. Mm -hmm. John was just saying to me, you could set this up on a lat pull down machine where you put your ankles in the knee pads mm -hmm. um, and then use some kind of rod. Yeah, uh, like a broomstick. Yeah, broomstick, broomstick rod. yeah. Um, but it's not going to be as smooth as this, unfortunately. <laughs> good. Oh, good. Hey, here we go. Finish strong. Good. Finish strong. <sighs> Come on. Finish strong. Work through it. Flex your hands. Flex them. Flex them. Flex them. There we go. That was nine. Good. So now I'd, I'd normally move on to a back okay. movement. We just hit back yesterday, but I still think we can do like a pullover. Or exactly something like what that. I was yeah, thinking. Yeah, okay. yeah. So watch. These are awesome to do pullovers. Really? Yeah. Kettlebell. Watch, watch my hand position. Look how it opened up my lats. Oh, are. yeah, yeah, yeah. Good job. Oh, man. Oh. I find that a kettlebell allows me a little bit extra range of motion without stretching my shoulder. Just from that hand, that hand position. Yep, perfect. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Opens this all up. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> oh. Okay. Grab that. Okay. A little different, right? Yeah, I really like it. The stretch almost feels therapeutic after yeah. yesterday. <laughs> it does. <right? laughs> um, so with these, especially when you're doing them with a dumbbell or a kettlebell instead of a cable, you're really getting peak tension here at the bottom. And then if you come all the way up here, almost nothing unless you're like actively squeezing your chest. So I like to keep it more in the, the stretch part of the range. So I'll come maybe about three quarters of the way up and then go really nice and back. Come on, come on. Here we go. Come on. Good, there we go. Right there. All right, last one. Let's push it a little more on this one. Okay. Once you think you're at failure, just kind of rep it out in that it's partial short. range. Partials? Yeah. Stretch, squeeze the lats. Stretch, <clears throat> squeeze, good. Nice. <clears throat> oh, God. oh, fire. <laughs> oh. Nice work. Fire. That pump from yesterday came back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we brought it back to life. Man. So, for this last one, we're gonna push it RP 10. So once you can't do another rep with good form. That's 11 in my book. You'd normally stop, yeah, and then after we reach our P10, just gonna do a few pulse reps <coughs> in the mid range. Here we go. Finish yep. Strong. Ooh. Ooh. Nice. Mm. Nice. Mm. Come on. Uh, I come got on. one more. Okay, come on. Come on. Uh. Uh. Burn, fight to the burn. Uh, yeah. That's it, that's where it got me, four and a half. <laughs> oh, buddy. Four and a half is what got me too. Feel the triceps on those? A little I, bit. I did too. Oh, yeah, they were man. Once you reach failure, uh, other muscles just start There's to triceps pop in. Like, okay, yeah. here I come. Your chest starts flickering a little bit. <laughs> we're gonna do some isolation work for the shoulders. So we would have gotten a bit of front delt over on the chest press over there, but we really wanna hit that lateral head. So just gonna do Plain hat lateral raises here. Watch my bicep. Ooh. <laughs> just, That's crazy. When the light hits it right here. <laughs> One of the things I do like doing is going real heavy and yeah. just working the bottom. Oh, really? And then sometimes, and then I'll lighten it up and I'll just work this. Let's do that. That's I've never tried nasty. that. Let's do that. So what would you normally use on the side lateral? Probably a 20 pound dumbbell so if I'm doing good form. So use the 35. I'm gonna do 40, because I feel like 35 might not be. Let's go 40. Now, this is more of a swing. Yeah. So don't think about, I gotta get the weight up. Yep. Just stand here, tilt your head back, and just swing like this. Okay. But so now you've got a heavy weight where you're strong, and we gotta do high reps. So let's do 15. 
Just swing. Four, five. We'll do 15, six, five more. One, two, three, four, five. Now you could do your sets like that, yeah. or now you could do another six you can to do eight. Full range of motion. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Dude, your form's perfect. That's perfect. Yep. Ah uh, yeah. That's nice. I like that. It's nice. That's different. It's very different, and it your shoulder still has to fire even if you're swinging it. Yep. It still has to work. Yeah. And it's getting a lot of weight in a position that's not used to having a lot of weight in. One thing that I like to think about, and, and you talk about keep getting your traps out of it, I find usually this isn't something I think about too much because I want my, <laughs> my traps to go, but women especially, I find, don't want that. So um, one cue that I use is think about almost like you're like, okay, so you're digging your hand down into the ground and you're trying to scoop some dirt up. Yeah. So you're, you're sweeping it out rather than like, but obviously rather than shrugging, but sometimes people yeah. can't think about it that way. So think about it with your hand and it's like I'm pushing out against you. Yeah. You right? know what? That's a great, like I tell people to flex their delt when they do it. That's actually a great way to think about Sweep it. Sweep it out. That's how you flex. Yeah. Cause that's what I'm doing. I, I'm, I'm flexing. And then when you got the heavy weight, that might, I'd have to experiment with it, but it might be a good like pre-activation drill for people who can't feel their delt because they're all you can do is out, <laughs> you know? <laughs> You're almost forced to think you do it that way. Four. 25 there. Fire. That is straight fire. Good Lord. So like, I think this is a decent teaching point because a lot of people have this, I think, misconception that if you're gonna do full body, you can't also train hard. I think it depends on the exercise. I wouldn't do this with like a barbell overhead press with all those <laughs> reps and all that intensity, right? Yeah. But on something like a lateral raise, relatively small range of motion, relatively lightweight, I could hit delts tomorrow. I could hit one exercise of delts again Absolutely. tomorrow. I'll be recovered by then. So that's kind of the point, like you just have to, use those intensity techniques and apply that effort appropriately to the right exercise. The right it exercise. isn't that you can't do it at all, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's... I think I don't think a lot of people think about that. They just think of it in general terms. Well, the cluster set's hard or well... Well, it depends on what you're doing. Exactly, you know? totally. We're gonna finish off with some bicep isolation work. Now, because the pullovers are gonna target the long head of the triceps to a decent degree, we're not gonna do any triceps isolation. Okay. We've got, got a bit of triceps over here, and I generally, when doing the high frequency full body, will alternate bicep and tricep isolation. Oh, I so see. on one day I do bicep, and the next day I do tricep. Okay. Today we'll do bicep. So I'm leaning back, elbows against the pads. Perfect. Perfect. Perfect, there we go. Nice. A little vein popping out. Uh, yeah. There you go. You got the, when you curl, you got the curl, like the curl? Yeah. Your vein curling, right here? Right here, yeah. Curls up when you're curling. I'm not too scared to take the bicep work to failure or really close to failure either, because like I said, I'm generally alternating day to day, so. If I do three sets of biceps one day, I'm not hitting it again for like 48 hours. I'm good to go even if I take them to failure. So I'd rather like play it safe than sorry with the bicep work, especially since it's a weak point for me. Um, so I, I usually program the intensity a little higher for these. When it comes to full body training, the way I'm currently doing is a high frequency approach. With that, recovery management becomes so much more important. Like you have to sequence the exercises properly, not only in the workout, but throughout the week as well to manage your recovery. Beginners don't need to do that really. Three full body workouts done three times a week, much more minimal. Yeah. You don't need to have the intensity techniques. You don't even need to have the same exercise variation. You can just do basic compound lifts two to three days a week, you'll be good. As you get more advanced, you will need more volume to progress. And so those three full body workouts might not be enough, especially if they start to get really long and your performance starts to taper off. Yeah. So that's where the high frequency full body split comes in. You do a little less per muscle per workout and you just spread it out evenly across those five days. What I found is people tend to make a couple mistakes. One is they try to do 
too much. That can either be too many compound exercises, yeah. too much volume per workout, yeah. or too hard per workout. Yeah. So you wanna start out lighter and slower and with less volume. Yeah. Um, then as you adapt to it, your recovery will improve to the point that you can start including some of the stuff that we did here, especially yeah. if you're more advanced and you're yeah. more experienced. Um, and, and that will be fine as long as you know, you're not doing too much. Um, I, I would say this, if you find that you can't get to a point where you can push yourself like we did you know, today mm -hmm. on, a, on a full body split, then I don't think there's enough of an advantage to full body training that it overrides not being able to push it hard. You know what yeah, I mean? Right. So like, if you can only be like, oh, I, like, I just can't recover on this, so I'm gonna have to go super light and super easy. Yeah, you should point? just do a full, you should just do upper lower, push pull legs or yeah. a body part split. It'd be more effective because you'd be able to push it harder. Right. But if you can get to a point where you're adapted and you can push sufficiently hard, yeah. similar to what we did today on full body, then I think it's, it's appropriate. So this is the first I've ever seen like this. This is a seated calf raise machine and then it duels as an anterior tibialis machine, so work in the front part of your calf. I bet you've never seen that before. Like that. That's really cool. Okay. All right, let's see what this is all about. So we lift this up. And then I'll just pull them back. Oh, yeah. All right. And then, okay. And that's it. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. You see this? Mm hmm. Do you legitimately train your tibialis anterior? Okay, so when I had the absolute best progress in my calves, I was super setting. You ever seen one of the hammer machines? where you sit down and they're like that. Yeah. Hammer makes a machine. It's just a little one where you yeah. sit down. So when you superset standing raises and the tibia raises, yeah. massive pump in your lower leg. That's the fastest my calves ever grew. Interesting. And high, high frequency. Wow. Cool. I was doing five days a week. Set here, set there. I get set here. I get really bad shin splints when I play a lot of basketball. Um, so I feel like that would probably help help yeah. me. All right, so we're gonna do three sets of 10 to 12 here, supersetting the seated calf raise with the interior tibialis exercise. Um, and that's gonna be a wrap for the workout. All right, what's going on guys? So I just wanted to hop on here and say what's up. I am back in Jacksonville, Florida right now. I just realized it's been four months since I did that collab with uh, John in Ohio, and it has been absolutely insane. But I did want to come on here and give you guys a little update. Um, I've been enjoying a bit of downtime. Actually, I've been hitting a bunch of new PR, so I'll make sure I keep you guys updated on all of that um, in a video very soon. Um, make sure you go over to John's channel. We actually did a couple of videos over there uh, you guys might like. I'll make sure I link them down below. Um, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys all here in the next one. Nice! Nice shot!